So we finally got some nice weather here and I'm at the Walter Klein range in Friendship, Indiana, the home of the NMLRA. We're on the primitive side of the range, kind of going along with the Traditions Hawken that we built this spring. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to finally be out shooting and showing you guys all the stuff that I've been getting around in my bag and the gear that we've gotten together to show you how to get started shooting with the kit that you may have built over the winter. So what I want to show you first is I've got my bag set up here and I've got some stuff on the shooting bench that I want to show you so that before you go to the range with your Hawken, you can get the things together that you're going to need to shoot one of these and have everything together. While it looks kind of simple, uh, we've got our muzzleloader here, we've got our bag and we've got our horn and a, a patch knife here. Ideally, we could carry everything that we needed in this little bag, but if you've made one of these and followed the tutorial, you'll notice that it's a little small and you're not gonna be able to carry everything that you probably should have with you at the range. Bringing the bag around here, you can see just a touch in here that the bag is pretty full now. Now this bag has everything in it that I would need to go on to a woods walk or to show up here at the firing line and plink a little bit. I don't have any tools other than my nipple wrench in here to secure my nipple or if I have to replace the nipple, take that out. Other than that, I don't have any replacement parts. So this bag that we made is just gonna be what I'm gonna be carrying while we're shooting here today is just gonna be the bare minimum stuff that we need. So to get started, I wanna talk about a capper. Our Traditions St. Louis Hawken that we put together is a percussion Hawken and it takes a number 11 cap. Now you can get CCI caps, you can get Winchester or Remington caps, but we're looking for that number 11 cap. So if you've picked up your caps, you're gonna notice that they're pretty small. Um, if you have large fingers like mine, it can be a pain in the butt to try to hold onto those and get them onto the nipple of your percussion lock. And to combat that, manufacturers have produced a thing that we call a capper. And a capper is just a thing or a tool that holds your percussion caps for you. I have, a, I have two different kinds here. This first kind here is just a straight line capper. This is a CVA brand, even though they don't produce a side lock muzzleloader anymore, they still produce some of the equipment to go along with them, which is nice. Um, you can pick these up at a lot of firearms, sporting goods stores. It's just kind of one of your standard go-to um, easy to pick up items. I believe this one was around $10 at a local shop. It's a nice capper. There's nothing real special about it. You load through this back port or hole here. It has this spring loaded tab that you push back. It keeps tension on your cap. And then at the front here, you push your little bar forward and that secures your cap. And then you can go ahead and set that cap there on your nipple and your lock will be primed. My personal, my favorite capper is the Ted Cash capper like this. It holds a ton of caps. It is nicely made, it's compact, and it's just a little bit nicer than the CVA capper that I've just showed you. I can open it up here very carefully and show you, let me get it here. That's how many caps this thing can hold. So you can, I think just about, put half a tin or so of caps, which is probably around 50 caps, into one of these, lock it back up, throw this in your bag, and you're good to shoot for an entire weekend, depending on how much you're shooting. I will say that Ted Cash is an NMLRI vendor and a muzzle blast advertiser. We really appreciate everything they do for us here, but it really comes down to this is just one of the best cappers on the market. So if you're in the market for a capper or looking to upgrade your capper, this is the kind of capper that I really recommend. These come in brass or a nickel silver finish. So if you like the gold or you like the silver, you can get one of those. This is a brass one that I've blackened with some brass black to go along with the brass hardware that we put on the Traditions Hawken this past winter. Digging into my bag here a little more, I've got a nipple wrench and this is handy just to have in the bag if I need to replace or adjust my nipple in the action or the lock. So this is nice and small. It's a good tool to have for something like this. This is a Thompson Center brand, and this was one that I could just pick up easily at a local shop. And it's gonna do fine for everything that we're doing or could ever need to do on this Hawken. One of the last things that doesn't 
really mattered the kind of muzzleloader that you have it's not tradition st louis hawkins specific is going to be our powder measure so when we're loading we want to have a consistent load of our black powder and using a powder measure like this one is a real easy way to make sure that we have a consistent charge every time now a powder measure is also really important because it adds an extra degree of safety to what we're doing here with muzzle loaders. When you're shooting a muzzle loader, you never want to prime or charge your rifle directly from your powder horn, your powder can, or your powder flask. That's any lingering embers or little sparks anywhere can set off your whole horn or a whole canister of powder and that is really bad. So we always wanna make sure that we're always loading from our powder measure. Like I said, it keeps the charge consistent and it keeps us safe on the range. There are a ton of different powder measures out there. I like a brass adjustable one like this one. It goes from 50 to just over 100 grains. And this is really important for when we're developing a load for our muzzle loader. We're just gonna be going by the Traditions book today but if I was tuning this rifle for some competitions or from, for some woods walks, I would really want to tune in the load going, I mean, if Traditions recommends 50 grains, it might shoot better at 60 or 65 or vice versa, you know? So you have the manufacturer recommendations, which is a great way to start. But if you're adding, you know, a souped up lock or a more accurate barrel, you're gonna to wanna to tune that muzzle loader and tuning your charge along with the size of our projectile is just one of the ways that we can, you know, personalize our muzzleloading experience. I've got the handbook or the little manual that came with our Traditions pocket. Now this is pretty much, this covers everything in their side lock space, uh, but it's got details specifically for the load and charge recommendations for these muzzleloaders. So when you see people asking online and getting responses back on projectile sizes and charges, Always be sure if you're just starting out to try to check your manual or visit traditions or look online for the actual manual that goes with your muzzleloader. It's an easy way to get a good starting point and get familiar with the manufacturer recommendations and then start tinkering with that powder charge and the size of your projectile to get it tuned in. So for this muzzleloader, I'm looking at it and this is a 50 caliber St. Louis Hawken and it recommends the 490 round ball with a 15 thousandths patching material. So when I'm getting ready, or when I was getting ready to bring this muzzleloader to the range, I went out and started looking for the right round ball size or round ball mold, like we showed you how to cast your own round balls. And I started looking for the right thickness patching. I was very fortunate in these times that we're living in right now, muzzleloading supplies are really delayed when it comes to mail order. Dixie Gunworks and Track of the Wolf are really backed up and I was fortunate enough to find some patching at my local gun shop that is gonna fit what we're looking for here. So I purchased a pack of 15 thousandths, CVA brand, just, you know, pillow ticking patches here. This is just a standard patching material. These are pre-cut and they should be ready to go for this Traditions Hawken. Alternatively, and we're going to show you in another video on the channel on how to do this, you can head down to your local fabric store or your local hobby shop that sells fabric by the yard and you can find your pillow ticking and you can find the right thickness. So what you'll see a lot of the times is muzzle loaders with their patch knife cutting individual patches out of their patching material like this. So whether you're cutting from the strip like this or you've purchased some pre-cut patches, you're gonna make sure that you have some patches in your bag. Jumping from the casting video, I've got a whole jar here of our 490 round balls. We cast some 490s and some 495s for this Hawken just to try them out. But we're gonna start with the Traditions recommended 490 round ball size. As far as patch lubricants go, I'm gonna be using a Wonder Lube. Uh, I've been involved in muzzle loading. My family has for a long time. So this is an older jar. It doesn't ever really go bad. This still lubricates patches fine, um, but you can still pick this up. I believe through RMC Oxyoke um, online, you can order, you can find their ad in Muzzle Blast. We'd like to thank them for that. And just to be upfront about that, they are a Muzzle Blast advertiser, but this is a great lube to use in your muzzle loader. For a powder today, uh, Traditions recommends a 3F powder. So I've got a can of Go-X and I've got a can of Swiss 3F black powder. We're gonna be using the Swiss today. I've already got a little spout deal here. 
to help control my powder pour. Um, so we're gonna be using the Swiss black powder when what we're doing for our shooting today. These spouts that you see here on my can of powder are really handy because they're made to fit a lot of these brass powder measures. So when I'm setting this powder back on my bench, I know the spout is closed because of this spring-loaded deal here. So there's no chance of any sparks getting into my powder can. But for an added level of safety, I can just drop my powder measure right in there. Just kind of puts a cap on that can and I don't have to worry about this. I can set this back on my bench away from where I'm shooting and I'm safe and I'm going to be able to continue muzzle loading for many years. I've also got a short starter to short start our balls just to make it a little easier to get them started. I've got some cleaning patches here. I've got an old bottle of hops number nine, just cleaning solution and oil that I'm using on this. And I'll use that because I'm looking at using this muzzle loader quite a bit in the few weeks ahead. I'm just going to use that after each time I shoot it. I'm not going to be taking the gun apart and cleaning it with hot soapy water, or giving it a bath or anything. I find that cleaning everything, wiping the whole gun down with some oil, and I'm ready to go shoot next week. And I don't really risk any bad rusting in between that time. That's just me. Your mileage may vary if you want to you know, really clean out your gun, like hardcore, spend a couple hours after each shoot. I don't blame you at all. Uh, just the method that I've been using is just a little different. And lastly, to make loading a little easier, I've got this 50 caliber brass ramrod with me. The ramrod that comes with the Traditions Hawken is that fiberglass or that plastic material. And if I'm loading and shooting a lot, I like a nice sturdy ramrod. I've got a nice palm rest here. I'm not beating on anything small with my wrist here. And I've got a nice muzzle protector here. Uh, in terms of muzzle loading and really just firearms in general, the muzzle to me is kind of a sacred space. So I don't want repeated use over time with this brass ramrod to eat away at that muzzle. Realistically, over a long period of time, you might notice some wear there, but keeping a bushing like this in there to protect that muzzle just kind of gives me an added level of comfort when I'm shooting and planning on using this for a long time. With the powder, I mentioned that I'm going to be loading directly from the can into my powder measure. With my powder horn that we showed you how to make on the video, I could very easily just pour the powder out of this into my powder charge. Really for just getting started with this Hawken, it's a bit more comfortable for me to be loading right out of the can. Uh, a tip that I saw from Black Powder TV with his powder horn though, was to attach the number of F's or the granulation of your powder if you have a 3F, Bob attaches three small leather strands to his powder horn so he can remember the granulation of the powder in that horn. I think that's a really great idea, and I just wanted to pass that on to you. You can check out Black Powder TV. We'll have a link down in the description. Bob has a really great new shooter series there. And at nmlra.org slash getting started and muzzleloading, we have links to a bunch of other YouTubers like Duelist1954, Black Powder Maniac, and Cap and Ball, who provide a ton of great videos on getting started in muzzleloading, and we'd love for you guys to check them out. I also want to mention too, before you head to the range, always make sure that you have some form of eye protection and ear protection. These muzzleloaders are pretty loud, not as loud as some of the high power stuff that you see now, you know, heading out to the gun range and things, but you always want to make sure that you're protecting your ears and your eyes. I've just got a pair of, I think they're 3M. I like these a lot. It's hard to lose them. I'm always wearing them. So when I'm at the range or when I know I'm going to the range that day, I just put these on. So I know when I get there, I've got some hearing protection going for me. I think most glasses manufacturers now or, or eye doctors, however you want to look at it, can also make safety rated prescription glasses. So if you're somebody like me who is interested and is doing a lot of shooting now, getting a safety rated pair of glasses is something really to consider. If not, really you should be wearing some kind of safety rated pair of glasses. You're gonna see a lot of people on the range wearing just their normal eyeglasses and it's really nice to have the added step of those safety rated eye protection glasses on just to make sure that you're keeping as safe as possible while you're at the range. Oh, okay. Wow. That's the way to end a video. <laughs>